I love you so very much, family. Welcome to GFCC. Those of you who are worshiping with us for the very first time, those listening to us, connecting us on Planet 101.1 FM, the extended family assembly, but especially those who are worshiping with us for the first time on that radio station or on the Christ radio, maybe a friend introduced you. Or maybe you just you are homebound this season and you're just going through your social media and looking at what is going on live and then you're stumbling upon gfcc it is not happenstance it's not coincidence it's not just chance it is the kairos of god's orchestration it is the appointed time of god's appointment with you I'm confident, like Paul would say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God to save. I'm not ashamed and I don't doubt in any way the capacity and the capability of God in his word. I celebrate you, all of you online. I celebrate you, the family gathering around planet 101.1 FM and the Spectrum TV. And I love and celebrate you, every one of you in this house today. It's a privilege and I have to remind you because the only way I get to remind myself is to remind you of the unique privilege that I wear. That I wear the privilege of representing God's government and his intention over you. I am intentional. I live in constant awareness. I'm aware of, of the enormity the weight that I carry on my shoulder. And for this reason, I am fought. For this reason, I am wrestled. For this reason, I am attacked. And for this reason, I fight. For this reason, I stand. And the only reason I want to live, want to live till tomorrow is representing God in the affairs of man and being his angel, his messenger. I love you so very much. And I will tell you again that I love you because it's true. In the prayer belt this week, we are getting angry through the word of God. So the prayer belt today, is a, this week is an expression of anger against the devourer. Okay, so we're still staying with Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. And a declaration that you will not go down and you will not be small, you will not be few, you will not be insignificant. That is resisting and standing against the devourer because the work of the devourer is to make you small, to reduce you, bring you down, and make you insignificant and inconsequential in the arrangement of life. So you have to resist what the scripture is saying in 1 Peter chapter 5. And the recommendation in verse 9 is that resist him. Resist him with the word of God. That's what we are doing in the prayer belt. A prayer belt for us in Grace Family, for those who are here for the first time, and we love you. I will take time out to celebrate you and tell you why I want to be your pastor, because I want to, I really want to. The prayer belt is a covenant prayer house of GFCC. It's a virtual everywhere you go prayer house, as you go prayer house. From 12 midnight to 4 a.m., anytime you rise within that belt, is a prayer house of grace family every day we get to meet there to pray for one another you pray for yourself you pray for me your servants and Ian and the people God has gathered around me in leadership you pray for the leadership of the 24 and the 8 and the assembly and then you pray for your family you pray for your own life using this intention somebody will be praying for you what covenant brings to the table is that you are not alone Recently, Russia, uh, Vladimir Putin visited Pyongyang, North Korea, and made a strategic alliance with the, the young ruler of Song in Pyongyang. And he's responding to what Europe is doing to support Ukraine and the talk of a possibility of Ukraine eventually becoming full member or becoming member of both EU and NATO. And Biden recently 
making an alliance security pact with Ukraine. That's a covenant in international space. So Biden is saying, I make it official. And why he's doing that is it's a long-term treaty so that even if Donald Trump should emerge president tomorrow, he will not wake up in his madness and say there is no support for Ukraine. So he went and made covenants with Ukraine. Security pact. And Vladimir Putin went to North Korea, who is a strong enemy of America, made a pact covenant. It means the day I'm attacked, you are also attacked. And I want to announce to you, this is how the Second World War began. The Second World War began with alliance, a security pact. Russia with Japan. Germany with Mussolini in Italy. And walking around. And Britain constantly trying to make an alliance with either Russia or these, hesitating over until Winston Churchill will come to the, uh, to the picture. This is our second world war. If you study history, this is how we started. So don't take what is for those of you who watch what's happening in the global space. And it should be, it should be every educated person should try to know what's going on because it helps you to pray. Those dots are being connected. So if the world does not wake up, we are getting to something very dangerous. Very dangerous. Those are strong moves. Very strong moves. Very strong moves. Very strong moves. Sorry, I'm sorry about bringing in international politics and all of that. My interest is about covenant, alliances. So in a covenant, you are not alone. So when we talk about covenant grace, it means you are not alone. It means when you are weak, somebody else is strong for you on your behalf. So when we talk about the prayer belt and the prayer zone, and as a family member being committed to it, it means your weakness is discounted by the strength of another person. And somebody's watching your back as you watch somebody's back. This is how God, this is how the angels are released for deliverance. If you look at Acts of Apostles talking about the deliverance of Peter from the plot of Herod, it was because there was a covenant house, prayer house, that people were praying night and day at the covenant level. The church was praying. And an angel of the Lord went out, tapped Peter, and Peter stood up and chains expired. The devil loves you to be alone. Isolation. The devil isolates you. By the way, the day they said the devil spoke to Eve, he was not with Adam. So one of the things that the devil does when he wants to give you a final blow and a knockout, he isolates you. He makes you feel you don't need others. You don't need fellowship. You don't need community. By the way, the secret of the Holy Ghost and the character of the Holy Ghost is communion, is fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship. Of, so the Holy Ghost is communion. The Holy Ghost is covenantal. It brings people together. Such that sometimes because you are in that place, somebody's, somebody's being attacked, somebody's under attack, maybe robbers in the night, maybe a child or something, and you just begin to pray without knowing why you are praying. You begin to pray. The Spirit puts pressure on you in a particular direction, and you don't know why. Or you wake up from a revelation. Why? You are in an alliance, in a security pact with heaven between you and others, and among others. So pay attention to when we talk about a prayer belt, it is, this house is a covenant house. Grace Family GFC is a covenant house. I've been telling of the few words that the Holy Spirit brought to my attention in the seminary. Mystery, grace, revelation, covenant. These are words I have lived with for more than 25 years of my Christian work from the seminary days. So I have covenants around my life. I have covenant number one, I will not deliberately, knowingly take advantage of anybody's weakness. I will not use the weakness of any human being on earth against that person. It's a covenant. Why? I'm a human being. I'm subject to weakness. 
And if there is a covenant that I will not use the weakness of one person, take advantage of one person's weakness, means nobody has power to use my weakness against me. One of the covenants in my life I have lived throughout the Catholic priesthood until now, I will never, I will never in any way, I will never in any way seek for any way of harming any minister. And I will never be part of any group or conversation that seeks to bring down a minister. Rather, I will risk my name, risk everything to stand by a weak minister. It's a covenant I have in my life. I will never, will never. If somebody comes to tell me about a minister and tells me rubbish and bad things, I will tell the person, let me be the last person you have told. I will make an agreement. Say, tell me I'm the last person. Don't tell another person. Why? If one minister is weak, it can be the turn of another. It takes a minister standing for families to stand, for individuals to stand. So one of the attacks of the devil against the church is to bring bad report and make people talk nonsense against ministers. What is he succeeding in doing? Once you hear nonsense about a minister, your faith in that minister goes down. You no longer believe he can serve God's purpose for you and you repeat it to another person. So every person you are telling, you are destroying the faith of that person. It means you are blocking God from ever using that person to say because God says, believe in me, you shall be established. It is your faith in a minister that will prosper you. So what the devil does is I make sure you don't have a faith in a minister. That is how gossips come up in church. Have you heard that this pastor, this person, that person. That person who is saying, have you heard, needs faith in that minister to be blessed. And the devil makes him or makes her lose faith first. And not, that's not enough. Makes him to spread it to other people to lose faith. That is how the devil works in the church. And I made a covenant about it. That I sit down in the office, somebody will come and tell me all the terrible things about the minister. I go home, I will not even tell him. Any. I'll just tell him, any. I'm so sad. And I would talk generally. Somebody came today and told me, and told me, and told me. But even going into specifics, I would find it extremely, like, it's impossible for me to repeat it. That's a covenant I have lived by. That's why when I resigned, everybody on the internet, everybody wanted to draw attention to their blog would write about me. I knew nothing would harm me. You know, I'm still in this city. You are sitting here. Many people believe in me, in spite of everything. Life is a covenant. Covenant means you are not alone. So you have to live in a covenant. So I'm just talking about prayer covenant as a prayer belt in Grace Family. So 12 midnight to 4 a.m. Anytime you rise within that time and speak with these intentions, you are not just doing it alone. You are standing in a place of communion and the Holy Ghost is working. And God is using the prayer of one another to help one another and strength is breaking out and revival will never die in Jesus name Amen. all right so another direction for that the prayer belt this week Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 16 and 17 those who devour you I will devour them that's the plan of God so you begin to speak about the broken unbroken word of God that all your devourers are now devoured and this one in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 25 to 26, is judgment upon the devourer. It is judgment. God says, I will contend against those who contend with you. And that you will be delivered from the hand of the mighty. And that those who seek to bring you down, they will eat their flesh. They will drink their blood. So this is war. It means something must go down and it is not you. Rise to your feet, say in the name of Jesus Christ. This week, concerning my life, something will go down. Something of the devourer. The walking of the devourer. And the devourer says somebody will go down. But it's not me. The devourer. And everything that represents the devourer, they go down in my life this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Be seated. We have been looking at the signs of the operation of devourer in your life. Before we look at the signs, let's again look at 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 from verse 8 to 10. 1 Peter chapter 5 from verse 8 to 10. Be sober. 
be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so the devil hates you is your adversary and he's a devourer seeks who to devour resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same suffering are experienced the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while perfect established strengthened strengthen and settle you so one of the things you know one of the ways the indices by which you judge whether you are under the attack of the of the devourer is stagnation 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 is being you can be in a place of hope of advantage it has come up here let me show you the workings of stagnation starting them face the congregation so he start it is standing there in relation to you is closer let's imagine you are the breakthrough you are the goal you are the wealth you are the promise of god you sitting seated there all the many the manifold blessings promised by god and pastor ita is standing there and i'm behind he had started he had moved on there but because he can no longer move he has reached the place of stagnation or his speed has been broken those who were behind whether it's 200 or 300 somebody that was behind who, who keeps moving moves ahead gets there so the one who is ahead but experiences others who were behind coming ahead you have to know that you have been devoured the work of the devourer brings about stagnation don't be seated sir it breaks speed breaks speed speed there are so many people who, who run who runs with so much energy but their energy does not translate into speed speed is about time and space how much space you have been able to cover within a specific time but you see somebody but somebody is exerting energy but before you know it somebody else has gone ahead of you is a work also that your speed has been devoured by the enemy. Your progress is devoured by the enemy when you experience stagnation. The goal of all this is to reduce your significance. As a result of stagnation and lack of speed, you become insignificant and inconsequential. It brings about setback. Always going back to where you started. It brings about a lot of hard work without corresponding reward, without corresponding results. It brings about waste. So devourers, they bring waste. Waste your time, waste your health, waste your resources, waste your opportunities. So why I keep mentioning this? Because this is the way to diagnose. We are diagnosing devourers operating in your life what is it that is being wasted you have great opportunities that do not translate into any significant result you've been ahead of others and they have all gone ahead of you you've been working hard in specific areas it could be in ministry it could be in relationship it could be in anything but no corresponding result you see you in a relationship you accept yourself you completely exhaust yourself Maybe to make somebody know you are, you are serious. And the more you try, the more you are looked down upon like. So you are devoured. It could be marriage. The more you try to please the man or to please the woman, the more insolent and, up and, and stubborn and disrespectful the person is. So there is a devourer at work. Could be working under a boss in the office. You put in your honest best completely. Everybody knows you are doing it. 
But it merits you nothing other than punishment. And um, every time there is a query, every time there is this, and you, you look down, you look at it objectively, everybody, comparatively, everybody knows this and that and that and that and that and that. The scripture says we are not fighting against principality, uh, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. You may say it's my boss, it's my this. But it's against principalities. And I took time to explain this in the previous assembly. And I want you to get the message. The message, if you have ever missed the message of the Rising Star Assembly, not that of today. You have to get that message. It will help you. So these are the manifestations, some of the ways by which you know whether your, your, your life is being devoured. In marriage, you have peace one day. You quarrel five weeks. You settle your quarrel in the morning. By afternoon, you have greater quarrel. And you may actually come to a point that you actually love to quarrel. You, you love to be angry with your spouse. The devourer is working in your marriage. And look at your children. All that you invest in, it just looks like nobody cares about them. In school, in health, and all of it just looks like they are all their friends. All their friends have overtaken them, have gone ahead of them. Those they mentored are now their masters, devourers. Rise and raise your right hand. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I may not know right now completely in what way the devil is playing the game of devouring in my life, but it, in the eyes of God that sees. By the hand of God that walks, I destroy what seeks to destroy me. I devour the devourer in my life. Let what contends against me eat his flesh and drink his blood. I bring down what seeks to bring me down. Say in the name of Jesus, I break the stronghold of the devourer over my children, over my household, over my marriage, over my health, over my finances, over my call over my future say i destroy the work of the devourers say you devil you no longer have power shout jesus as i speak the work of the devourer will expire in jesus name be seated today i had made a promise last week i had made a promise last week that i would i will i would i will give you by revelation the greatest gift that the devourer needs from you. The greatest gift that believers and unbelievers give to the devourer. The greatest gift is the gift of disobedience. When you disobey God, you do the devil the greatest good. When you move without consulting God, Without asking God for direction, you give the devil the greatest gift. The scripture talks about Elimelech. <laughs> uh, glory to God. Are you ready for today? Say, by the Spirit of God, I am ready. Say, by the Spirit of God, I am ready. Elimelech, let's go to Ruth chapter 1. I want to give you two, three experiences in the scripture by which people give the devil a gift and the devil uses it to devour them. The reason of this is to let you know how your disobedience, the dis disobedience to the word of God and disobedience to whoever God sets righteously over you. How disobedience to the righteous instruction for your good of anyone that God appoints over your life is the greatest gift you give to the devil. When the devil comes devouring you, the prayer of that person is ineffective. Disobedience is the key indicator of dishonor. Honor comes with obedience. It's a show of dishonor. And this, what dishonor does is this. Whom you dishonor, the mind of the one you dishonor can only crush you. It cannot lift you. 
God is mighty. Honoring him makes his power available to lift you. Dishonoring him makes his power to crush you. He said, those who honor me, I will honor. Honor is using your strength to lift and exalt the one that is above you. Using your resources, using your time, your gift, your ability to raise the name, to lift the affairs, to raise higher than you, the one that you honor. This honor is using your strength, whether it is your mouth, to speak, using your walk, your hand, to walk against the one, to bring down, instead of exalting, honor is exalting. When we say we honor you, Lord, it means we exalt you. This honor means bringing down the reputation, bringing down the good name, bringing down the dignity, bringing down the value of the person above you. It means whatever comes from the person can only crush you because when what is above you falls on, upon you, you will go down. So when God says, those who honor me, I will honor them. It means you use your strength, your resources, your time, your talent to lift the name of God, to lift the work of God. And he uses his eternal power to lift you up. Okay, let, let's not do philosophy. Let's just look at scripture. Two ways by which believers dishonor God or show God disobedience is by not caring about God's opinion in your affairs. You want to take a decision as a child of God, God is the primary interest. God is the first stakeholder. You don't take decision until you pray because your life is not just your, what the information you don't have today, God has it. What you don't know about tomorrow, God knows it. So a way of showing God honor and living in obedience to God is first of all to seek. Do you want us to do this or not? Issue of just waking up, the husband says, I'm going to the village to bring a housemate. Or shows up with a housemate and tells the wife, this is a new housemate that will help us. We didn't even pray about it. We didn't even talk about it. I have decided I'm the head of this family. Elimelech, the scripture talks about now it came to pass. This is Ruth chapter 1. I'm talking about how to give the devourer a help. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Marlon and Kilion, Ephratites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Now, number one thing is that Moab is one of the places that God said the people of Israel should never have any relationship with. So Moab is a no-go area in the plan of God. You know, these days of everybody wants to go abroad. There are some people who go abroad and their children are wasted by drugs. Their marriages are wasted. There are people who have relocated abroad, relocated into destruction and everything gone, just that they are abroad. issue of abroad, abroad, abroad. As a child of God, it matters to God, your location. Because the plan of God is not everywhere. The plan of God for you is not everywhere. And it's not every time. The plan of God has a location and a timing. I don't know where I'm communicating. Jesus Christ, there was a time his brother said, why are you here in Galilee? Why don't you go to Jerusalem and go there and show, let everybody know that uh, he told them, for you every time is right, for me, it is not time. So there is a timing and there is location. So one of the ways to show that you are under obedience and you are honoring God is that you ask God for direction about where you want to go and what you want to do. That people are relocating doesn't mean everybody will relocate. As a child of God, you find out what would be the consequence of this relocation on your future. Because God knows something. Can I tell you something? America is not heaven. 
Canada is not the city of God. The UK is not heaven. Uh, is it heaven? Sir, so heaven is the only place you relocate to and you don't need to ask God. Because it's our home. Every other place you ask God. This is the problem of Elimelech. That there was famine. Famine. In Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the house of bread. Bethlehem. 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 Beth is house. Door. Place. In Hebrew. Laham is bread. So Bethlehem is the place where bread is found. Do you know why Jesus was born in Bethlehem? He says, I'm the bread of life. His, be his birth in Bethlehem was not accidental. That Bethlehem is called the house, it's called the, the home of David, the house of David. It's not, it's not just happenstance, something, an accident that happened. It is the divine programming of God. So Elimelech left the place of bread because there was famine. A time of pressure is a time when destinies make mistakes. These are not new messages. I've been preaching this forever. Pay attention to, to when your marriage is under pressure, when your family is under pressure, when your business is under pressure, when your health is under pressure. That is when you can give the devil a gift by doing things without asking God for direction. Many years ago, when we started the charismatic ministry in 2006, I had an experience. I brought somebody into ministry that brought me so much pain, caused me to cry. Opened the door of ministry and it was a sentimental door. It was emotional. Somebody related to somebody who knew me when I was a little, who were, people who were close to my parents. I just, oh, let me also give this person opportunity. And the only reason was the father, the mother, the history they had with my parents. And the person caused me so much pain and caused me to cry. And I cried to God. God asked me, did you ask me? I will never forget that day. I cried. I said, God, why is this happening? You know my heart. He asked me, did you ask me? And I said, I did not. And from that moment, I started asking for mercy. The scripture said there is a, there is a way that seemed right, right? Yeah. I know of a young man that I used to call pastor. One of those people who met us from Ibom Hall. I had so much respect for. Who has left Grace Family because I preached against Japa. So for him, I'm a witch who is trying to stop him from relocating. And every day I remember him, I just pray, God, please guide him and order his steps. Sir, I don't preach in this place to make you comfortable. Prophets don't speak the language of people's vanity. I don't need to prove my call by prophesying for you to relocate. I just hope you are not relocating into drugs for your children and divorce for your marriage. Just hope you are not relocating into pagan life and losing faith. Elimelech, from the house of bread, left because there was famine. Verse 3, then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died there in Moab, where he was not supposed to connect. America can be your map. As certain people, before they arrive in the U.S., everything is made possible, everything is beautiful. Now some people, they relocate and their children wasted. Their marriage is wasted. Their health wasted. And they can no longer come back because they don't want anybody to know their shame. Everybody has a path from God. Find out God's path for you. Rise to your feet. Rise, raise your right hand. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not hearing me. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not open the door for the devourer. Speak it louder. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I will not open the door for the devourer. Shout it louder. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I will not open the door for the devourer. In Jesus' name. Be seated. Be seated. I know of a young woman 
that the, the mother brought to me some many years ago as a Catholic priest. A young person was in Canada for about six years, all the resources wasted, and she came back, no certificate, no nothing, no, no evidence she went to school. So I had a private meeting with her. The parents said she was doing well in Nigeria before she went. So they sent her because they had money and their friends, their mates, all their, the people in their gang. They were sending children to, her, to, the, to Canada and they did it. And they sent this one. And I, when I sat down with a young girl, I said, come back and meet me. And no, your mom is not there. See, I went to Canada, I was overwhelmed. I was just overwhelmed. I could not cope. I was just too overwhelmed. And I became too ashamed to let them know what I was going through. So money was just coming. I was just staying. Because I didn't know what to do. When I became too tired, I said, let me just come and face them. If I die, I die. She was overwhelmed. Did they ask God? If they ask God, maybe God will tell them this person will do better. First of all, finishing degree. She said she left at the age of, how, how old? A very early age, in, you know, maybe 16 or 17. And she went, and she went there, what she saw there. The two of our people, the emotional strength and growth of children are different. I don't know where I'm communicating. These are things of asking for direction. Maybe the child will have done better if she had finished first degree here. Yeah? And maybe gone for master's. If you ask God, God will let you know. If you, God, sir, God does not deny his children information. The problem is that too many decisions we take come from the place of pride and competition and rivalry and vanity. And there are many preachers who just make you feel the only way you are blessed if you don't also do what others are doing. Sir, your success is not the success of another person. And the day you think when you do what other people do, you are successful. That means you have not yet started life. You don't exist. Other people exist. Your success is primarily grounded in God's plan for you. And God's plan for you affects your time, affects your location, and affects your connection. In God's success for you, there are people God wants you to deal with. There are places God wants you to connect. And there are times and seasons for you. The time to move and the time to stop. I ask God that in any way the devourer had taken advantage of your lack of honor and submission in asking God for direction. I ask God that you are restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Sir, God is not a God of vanity. God doesn't do, to, do things so that you belong to your mate and your friends. So this man died. That was the first thing. He died. And she was left and her two sons. Verse 4, what happened? Now they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one, of the one was Ophra and the other one, the uh, upper rather, and the, the name of the other one, Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. Then both Malon and Kilion also did what? Died. They didn't die of old age. The mother was still there. Ten years into that place, they died. So the woman survived her two sons and her husband. And Moab was Moab, Moabing. And then she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard that the country of from in the country of the, of Moab that the Lord had visited where where his people. And had given them bread. So, this is this is a, cl a classical case of devourer, devouring a family, making a family insignificant, diminished, small, set back, wasted, ruined. So they had two women, a company of women, three men gone, left. Three women. And by the time Naomi came back to, Je to Bethlehem, he said, do not call me Naomi, because Naomi means sweetness. Call me Mara. I pray that your next decision in life and your next location in life will not turn your Naomi into Mara. 
I pray that your malon and killion will not be devoured. And that your sweetness will not be devoured. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, show me mercy in any area. I have taken decision and not consulted you by which I am devoured by the enemy. Lord, show me mercy. Restore me because of your mercy. Pray that prayer. Restore me in recovery. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. Be seated. That is one case. Let me show you another case. I'm going to show you three cases in the scripture. And we are done. And next week, by the grace of God, we will we'll give perhaps the final teaching. Not the final forever. About this devourer issue this, this season. Now, the next one is in the New Testament. It's about Paul, whom God had told in Jerusalem. Now you have testified about me, if testified about me in Jerusalem, you shall do the same thing in Rome before Caesar. So Paul was destined to relocate. This is a relocation by, desti by divine destiny. After he witnessed to the salvation of God through Christ in Jerusalem, in a revelation of the night, God told him, yes, you have witnessed here, but you will go to Rome and witness. So he was bound to go to Rome. And when the Jews plotted to destroy him, he appealed to Caesar. And the king said, oh, you have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. Acts of Apostles chapter 27. Acts of Apostles chapter 27 verse 1. And when it was decided that we should sail to Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners. I, I declare over your life, I declare again over your life that if right now you are located, you are living, you are walking, you are connecting the wrong place, that is because of your location you are made small, that it is because of your association you are devoured, I ask the visiting hand of God in the name of Jesus. God said that the the, the prey of the mighty shall be delivered. No matter the, how mighty the connection and the location, I declare your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall no longer be devoured. Amen. Amen. So I'll be seated. Where you buy your land and dwell, there are some lands you buy, you are not supposed to build them. Ask God. Are some beautiful apartments, but you are not supposed to rent. Ask God. When I came back from Abuja after a short mission that I, I went to in the church and I returned, and we needed to have set up Grace Family Center with studio. I had partners across Nigeria, resources, and we needed to have a place independent of a parish so that when you are taken from a parish, it doesn't affect the work, the radio, the TV program, and all of that where we set up the recording studios, music studio, and the digital, uh, and suit, editing suit, and the rest area for me and for those who were working with me, and a guest place for those who will visit ministry. I came, I had money in my hand. Everywhere I went to, we prayed and prayed, we would go to a place, and we will like it, and it's so beautiful. That night, a revelation will come. Because we were praying. We prayed, took time to pray. God will give you a revelation about the place. One of the places, we loved it. It was a beautiful place. Beautiful place. Lord of mercy. And the woman who owned it, I'm told, was in Germany. The agents got us to meet with the sibling. And they were, money, was, we were ready to. And the woman just asked. But these people that are going to have their, who are they? What are they going to do with it? He said, it's a minister. They are going to use it for some war of ministry. From that moment, everything ended. The woman was in Germany. Let's not talk about what she's doing in Germany. So the connection means we cannot mix prayer with whatever is helping us in Germany. <laughs> 
Another place you go to in the night you see robbery. Revelation will come to you robbery. The Holy Spirit is just telling you there, if you move in there, know that one day you have to prepare for robbery. And eventually we, are, we had all the peace in this world was like two times the amount required in others. We looked for everywhere. We didn't have that same peace, but every time we came to the place, there was peace and nobody was ready to take the place. It was like hanging around your neck, but the money is too much. And the owner of the house, so arrogant, a, 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 a general in the Air Force, very arrogant man, Lord have mercy on me. Very annoying, but it's the only place you have to pay, so you have to pay heavy amount of money just because it was the will of God. And God knows, until we lived there and left there, there was no issue. Sir, ask God for direction. Ask God for direction. So these people, they were going to Italy. See what happened. It was decided. And they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to, to one named Julius, a centurion of Augustan regiment. God will open your eyes to see the source of your devourer. I said God will open your eyes to see the source of your devourer. You will not move emotionally. You will not move sentimentally. You will not move irrationally. You will not move by vanity. In Jesus name. Look at verse 5 of the Acts of Apostles chapter 27. And when we had sailed over the sea which is of Sicilia and Pamphylia we came to Myra, Myra a city of Lycia there the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy and he put us on board verse 7 when he had sailed slowly many days and arrived with difficulty of Thnidus the wind not permitting us to proceed we sailed under the shelter of Crete of Salome Passing it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Heavens, near the city of Lycia. Verse 9. Now when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, say advised them. He was a prisoner, but he was God's stakeholder. So he advised them. What was the advice? There is always a way out. God always gives you help and you don't accept it. Every time you come to church as a child of God, if you pay attention, there is something about your current life or where you are going to that God speaks about and you refuse to accept. Every relationship that leads to marriage that breaks people and destroys people, if there are people who have been in God's circle, there was a voice that was ignored. Recently, one young man that I've been praying with me since 2007, he relocated from Lagos. I didn't like him initially, but he, was, he has been one of the most consistent, devoted person. Relocated from Lagos, came and saw the ministry in the, vill the village. He said he's no longer going back to Lagos. This is what he's been looking for. He's been around me. When it was time to marry, he went and married. But God had put... One of those in my circle, a chief person in my circle, had an encounter. I said in that encounter, I went and told him, go and tell that young man that the woman is about marrying is not the plan of God. That, that is going to bring trouble. He said, I came in a dream and told him. And he went and told him. He said, no matter what you have spent, let it go. Don't go further. Father came and warned me in a dream to warn you. He waved it aside. Went and married. Recently, he had to run away from the house. The marriage is not up to three, three years. He, has, he runs away. He just runs. He's, I mean, what I mean, run. You know what it means to run? You can leave your house by walking away, but you can leave your house by running away. This one is not walking away. It's running away. As Ndosita won't Ibat. Reducing you. Making your life miserable 360 degrees. No day that you can call rest. Absolutely. That door was open for warning. Because, sir, you regard me as a principal in the plan of God. And somebody comes and tells you, 
that I came in a revelation and spoke about this and about that. And you don't take time to pray about it, it means you are a fool. Let's leave it there. As I'm talking to you, it's not a beautiful experience. His life is never the same. And I've, sustained, I've suspended him in everything ministry. I tell him, no way, you, don't, you are not involved in anything. You cannot be involved in anything. Go and resolve your issue. And that's not the only warning he had. God has witnesses. The scripture says, by the testimony of one and two, uh, of two and three, a case is what? Established. So when a warning like that comes, it's not only one that will come. There will be, there will be agreement somewhere. So pay attention at every point in time God is speaking. So you come and sit in church and sleep. Come and sit in church and debate what is spoken in your head. And you don't know what is about happening that God is speaking about. Because if you take revelation and study and pray with it, an understanding will come when the time comes. Oh, this is what God was speaking about. Sir, I don't come to speak to you from the words I hear from internet. Sir, I receive words from God. I receive words from God. I can boast about that because that's the only, the only thing I know. That's the only thing I know. I don't take words from anywhere. I receive words from God. So you have to pay attention. Paul warned them. I pray in the name of Jesus today. I think God just wants to show mercy to somebody who has been in a waste. Somebody who has been in a waste for a long season. Rise to your feet. Somebody who has been in a waste in a long season because the person neglected the voice of God. That God will show you mercy today. I say God has shown you mercy today. I say God has shown you mercy today. I say God has shown you mercy today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. I'm still about marriage. Another person. And I, I don't want to talk too much so that people don't know what I'm talking about. When the arrangement for the marriage came, there was issue of sentiment that I was also involved. This, 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 this. I was, I was sleeping one day and God took me in a revelation and showed me the future of that marriage. And it was shame. I came out of the revelation. I picked up my phone while still sleeping. I was not fully awake. I sent a message. I said, stop. No matter what you have spent, let it be wasted. What I see coming is shame. Say, no matter what happens. Every day the person regrets it. Say, I wish I hid it. That it was by sentiment. And there was a, a lot of sentiment that I was also part of. But when the revelation came, I communicated. He said, what I see coming is shame. No matter what you have spent, let it go. That God will restore you. Let it go. God will restore you. And the person made a mistake. And has regretted it. And it's been a painful experience. It was by the hand of God, God delivered the person from destruction. By the hand of God. Strange hand of God. Strange hand of God. That God delivered him from destruction. From the strange hand of God. I'm talking about how God gives us opportunity. So many people who are languishing and, and crying. They have been going to church. God has spoken. There was a help that you did not receive. There was a help that you did not receive. Francis, my son, just got married. I, I'm sure I saw the wife in the first assembly. And everybody would think I recommended the wife to him because the wife is the daughter of my friend. I have not. I did not. Francis is a typical Igbo man. He has been with me for 18 years. Francis swore he would marry an Igbo girl. Ah, Francis goes to his village very regularly. Igbo man, don't joke with them. They come from Canada, they built, they may not have roots, but the best houses they have built is in their village. Every year they will go. So Francis will go to his village for wedding, for burial, for everything, in the Igbo, and will go there. And wanted to marry an Igbo woman. So I cannot marry any woman here. Every time God would tell me, it is not true. One day I came up from a, rev a revelation in 2018 after I got married. I came up from a revelation and I called him. And I spoke, he said, you will not marry by custom, by tradition, by sentiment. You will marry by revelation. And he said, amen. That was the day the door was locked against him marrying an evil woman. He didn't know. So every year, we have been fighting over marriage for years. Everybody he saw was a problem. 
every Igbo person, the one he loves will be will turn out to be will turn out to be tiger. The other one will turn out to be scorpion, and all of that. And every time I meet him, I will tell him, "You are wasting your time. Your wife will not be from tradition and custom." And sentiment, and he will struggle. He says it is not true. He's not. He will try another one. He will fail. He will try another. It's Francis here. <laughs> Until the last one, we hosted one. We hosted. We hosted this one like a queen because it means a lot to me. When he say one somebody is coming, I say ah, I am here. We have to clear. That's the first person we have ever hosted like that. Clear visitors room, set up snacks, set up bar, set up everything to receive somebody here. And the person had never seen anything like that. But as the person left, quarrel broke out. <laughs> And when I ask, how now, how far, how far, bros, when are we starting the thing? He said, we are not in agreement. He said, okay. I will remind you, you will not marry by sentiment, by tradition, by custom, by. So when we got tired, one day, he now began to pray. If I am the one stopping myself from getting married, I ask you God to deliver me. That was his deliverance. If I am the one, if what I said, if what I have been saying over my life is blocking me, Lord, show me mercy. And he was released. And I would ask him, kneel down. I will bless him. I will bless him. The young woman, let's talk about this so that people understand. The young woman that Francis is now married is the daughter of my, I, have, I've, I talked about the parents, the father and the mother. The mother stood here. An incredible person. But do you know what happened? It's now after the marriage, she reminded me. I met her in Ibom Hall. The sister, the senior sister, met Christ in my hand. The husband is the first Christian in his family, in the in Grace family. And this girl was staying with the sister. They she used to come to Ibom Hall. One little girl would stand there, sit down, be looking at me. Eventually, she came through the of the Holy Spirit and met Christ. For whatever strange reason, my spirit was with this girl every day. Anytime she was in need, she moved in and was living here. The day I heard from the sister, she was no longer living with her. And she said that day I met her, that was the first day she left the sister's house to come and live alone, that she was so lonely. And for the first time living alone, she didn't know how to start it. But that day I met her and gave her a, a lift. And from that day, I started watching over her. When I don't see her in church, I will call. And when... When she's hungry, I will know she's hungry. Somehow, somehow, I'll call. What is that? During Christmas, we gave little bags of rice to people. I will send back up. I said, go to church and pick back up. I don't know why I was so protective. Everywhere she went to. When I don't see her in church, I will call. Where are you? I am in my sister's place in, uh, in Baeza. And the now sister, I'm sorry if you are listening to me on the internet. The sister is saying, how will father just be calling you? Does not even ask about me. And I knew the sister before her. Because the sister is older. How will sister, father be calling you? And does not even ask about me. Once he knows, I'll, ask, I'll call the sister is your sister with you augusta is with you, you say yes what is, why what is she doing there that's what i've not asked about that and she was getting angry now as this marriage took place everybody will have thought i recommended no just that the spirit had known that's my daughter-in-law and I, I forgot it she had to be the one reminding me the day she came to thank me nailed down how you have been watching over me. Every time I was down, you will call and look for me. You will send me gifts. You will do this. Because I love Francis, my son, and I was blessing him every day about the wife who married. And the Holy Spirit had already revealed to my spirit, take care of this one. This is the one who is the answer. Sir, if you pay attention, God has told you everything you need to know. I'm sorry. Let me do something terrible. One day, this young woman that just married Joseph, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you have never heard this. Now we can hear you be seated, sir. Happy married like you've started married. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't answer that question. Don't mind me. <laughs> sorry. Nora has been taking care of the, of the first lady's office. Always there. So one day I was just looking at Nora, always there. And I told Francis, have you not seen Nora? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Francis. The tank of Francis is not in church today. Say, Francis, have you not seen Nora yet? Don't you see something? That was when Francis told me, I have seen the person. It's not Nora. Now, 
she had delivered himself from the problem of you. Pay, pay attention to your words. So he's married to somebody. The spirit are revealed to my spirit to take care of. Another is married to the right person. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever, rise to your feet. However you ignored the word and the visions and the direction of God and you are in trouble, receive mercy in the name of Jesus. I say receive mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated, sir. I don't know. Is this making sense? God. How you benefit from God is obedience. And obedience makes you seek direction. So you don't do things because everybody is doing it. And when I asked Francis, I'm sorry for this. Let's conclude this story of Francis. After one month of relationship with this young woman, I asked him, so what is it? How do you, now, everyone you've been meeting, one thing or the other, Francis told me something. Everything I have been trying to make others into is who this other person is, naturally. Direction. Walking by revelation. Not walking by tradition. Not moving because others are also moving. Not moving by what you see, by sight, but by guidance. God will guide you out of that devourers. I speak that God will guide you out of the hands of the virus. Let me cause a little trouble here. Not a little trouble, real problem. Anybody you are planning to marry that is given to you by vanity but, and not by revelation, I scatter that revelation. That, I, scatter that, I scatter that relationship. Anybody you are planning to marry that will make you insignificant in the future. That will make you useless in the future. That will make you hopeless and helpless. That will set you back. That will slow you down and make you slow. I break that level in the name of Jesus. So, devourers come through different things. Disobedience and walking without direction from God. They are great gifts you give to the devil to devour you. So you can walk into a neighborhood and live in a land. He said the person sold the land every day. Attack this, that, that, that. Did you actually ask God that is where you were supposed to live? Your life matters to God. It was not by mistake that God said his people will live in Goshen while in Egypt. In this earth, there is your Goshen. And your Goshen is not somebody else's Goshen because it's popular. Your Goshen may not look like it, but your Goshen is God's plan for you. In Jesus' name. So Paul warned them. He warned them. Paul warned them, verse 9. When much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. After all, he was a prisoner. There are some people come and sit down in church and look at you. After all, you resign from a Catholic prison. We are just trying to help you. We are just trying to help you. You should keep your mouth quiet. Um, and just accept the help we give you and don't pretend like you know too much. So advice. He said, I know, and you woman, you know, prophet, seven months, okay, but you made you fall about same because, but say, you know, yeah, eh, do we call, say, come out, you know, you call me, good, dang, so, so, you default. No, there are so many people like that. Oh, it's true. It's true. So, you speak words that should arrest danger. They are, in they are looking at your history, they are looking like you need. But you need people, the way you are talking, the way you are talking. And because of that, what you, what you say loses value and cannot save. If there is anybody like, this, in, like that in this congregation, receive mercy. Yeah. I say receive mercy. Yeah. There are so many prayers we pray, we shouldn't pray. God always sends help. So God sends help. If you are serious about God, nothing will happen without God sending you help. And Paul was God's help in that place. He was a prisoner, so he was despised by the centurion. 
And that became their greatest undoing. And let's look at it from verse 20, the same Acts of Apostles chapter 27. I'm done. From verse 20 to 26. Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. Because advice of a prophet, of an apostle in their midst, the first thing said of Paul is that he was among the prophets and teachers in Acts of Apostles chapter 13. Being an apostle is what came as a mission. But it's by nature, it was God's prophet. One who was the oracle of God and a teacher, a teaching prophet. And as an apostle sent. And they ignored. So if you ignore my being sent, at the need, any time, you don't, you don't want to know about the consequences. You don't want to know about it. This is how devourers are empowered. Find out who is God setting over you at any point in time. And these days that people roam about. Roam about. They don't listen to their pastors. They have people with strange spirits. Who have nothing to tell them but to show them witches and wizards. But they don't teach them the ways of God. And they walk about obeying voices of prophets who do not know God. But they don't know the word of God. They don't know the word of God. So I'm not coming here to tell you vision and telling you dreams. I just have to make reference to this one. The greatest thing I do here is to show you the counsel of God. The counsel of God. Find out at every point in time who is God setting over you. If that person is God's covering over you, pay attention to what he says in a particular season. Marriage will be restored. Because any day you have problem in marriage and come and sit down in this congregation, there will be a word coming from me addressing that problem. I don't know if there's anybody here. Oh, many hands. That you had problem at home. And I'm not aware. But you sit down and it looks like I, I know everything that was going on. Why? I am set as an authority watching over you. So while you sleep sometimes, I don't sleep. You don't know how many days I'm away from Indiana and the children. To stay away. To fight over your destiny. So I don't come to, I don't come to speak a cheap word from the place of Gary and beans and all of this. Sir. I go through a process. The understanding I have about, of, about God, those in a traditional and occultic society, they know about it. Separating themselves. I come from a very diabolic you know, community. That when people, very terrible, strange thing. They don't eat what women cook. They don't sleep with women. They sleep in, in forests. So in ministry, the same way, there are certain levels of ministry you reach. For you to prepare for ministry, there is, there is separation. That you don't hear too many voices around you. And when you go through that process, that means God wants to use one word to solve many problems. And people sit down and they second guess and make it feel like you are not worth it. And they pay the price in marriage they should not pay. Pay the price in marriage. I still feel pain in my heart about a young man in this family. That his marriage was going down. And the wife came to me and I begged him in my office. Begged him. I begged him literally. And told him what to, go, what to do for that marriage to be restored. And the window was still open. The young man despised me. Did not even honor me with a serious attention. It made me feel like I was not worth it. I was not it. And when that window was closed, he came begging. Tried everything. As at the last time I saw the wife, he said, I'm a back case me. It doesn't exist. And each time I want to visit to talk to the wife about it, it looks like it doesn't exist. That window of restoration had been closed. And I'm praying. Every day I'm still praying for them. It was a timely intervention. But despised because he did not recognize the authority that I have over. If he just obeyed me, I did. Because by the time I met the wife, he said, he did not do what you asked him to do. He did something else. And I'm not sure we still have that conversation. If he just did what I wanted him to do, that time there was still a chance. Sir, devourers, they are not the plan of God for you. They're not the plan. Rise. By the mercies of God, escape devourers. 
I say by the mercies of God escape devourers by the mercies of God escape devourers I say by the mercies of God let your family escape devourers by the mercies of God let your children escape devourers by the mercies of God let your business escape devourers by the mercies of God escape devourers in the name of Jesus be seated, be seated, be seated. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Say there was no hope again in verse 20 of Acts of Apostles chapter 27. In verse 21. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now, I urge you to take heart. I urge you to take heart. For there will be no loss of life among you. Sir, the mercies of God through ministers. Ministers are never really appreciated. Sincerely, if you understand God's administration over his church, over his body, if you understand why God says believe in God you shall be established believe also in his prophet why those words were inspired from the mouth of the king believe also in his prophet he says I do nothing without revealing it to my prophet so God saves by his prophet a young minister that I did not know anything about but my heart was drawn to him in a particular season of his life I went to his house and sat down and just talked like a fool he understood me. But me, I didn't understand me. At the end of it, I apologized to him. I said, I don't know. I just came to tell you. I just felt, I drove myself to that. I don't go people to, to people's house. But I had the burden. I couldn't rest. And I just had, I sat down and took him through. And I told him something. I told him a few things about this place. He said, this territory that God has called us to work in devours the best. God has shown the heavenly places of this place to me. About 2007, 2008, I was shown. The battle that I saw from that moment till now, by the grace of God, we are winning it. The battle that makes Okubusem struggle in ministry, struggle in business, struggle in almost everything. The battle that makes people here good enough for house help to serve so that people come from outside and people serve them here. But those who stand on their own, they don't stand for five years. In almost area, every area, sit down and study this place. Who are the most prominent in business? Look at things, the rate. The rate. So God showed me this land. God showed me. And these are not things we can talk about. It took me years to understand the revelation. It took me years until today, every day of my life, I'm fighting the battle I was shown. The things that contend against God's plan in this place. Somebody from this place, whom Bishop Ayedopo was introduced in his ministry as brother. Ayedopo, many years ago, somebody from this place. In his ministry, he came from Kaduna to attend his ministry and he was introduced as brother. I hear the As I'm talking to you, many of you don't know his name. You don't know whether he has a ministry. The man who introduced Dr. Bishop Ayerepo in those days, because of his stature, because of his level of operation in ministry, the man came as a young man from Cardona and he said, oh, we welcome brother Ayerepo. Ayerepo comes to fellowship with us. He didn't come as a guest speaker. The day the man arrives in Calabar, international airport and was received he made reference to a man who lived in this land that he visited as a young minister the person is from here is not known is insignificant what devours greatness in this place i went and told the young man I sat down in his house say greatness is devout in this land that extraordinariness is diminished in this land the destiny of this land is that the best will be servants in their home. 
and good enough to be exported as houseboys and housegirls. It was not long because he despised what I said. He did not take it seriously. He knew I was saying the truth but could not tell me, okay, these are specific. We need a help. He paid for it. And I'm trusting God that God will show him and say, I hope he's watching me and if he watch this, he's, he's not careful enough. He's not even learning. He has not learned it well. He has not learned it well. And I'm saying this with anger. As I pray for him, I'm getting angry. Praying with anger. It's not learning well. I went and spoke to him. When the fire broke out, it was something that was beyond repair in every area. And I wept. One of the moments I have cried in this life like a baby. I cried. I cried for us. He said, God, how could you have revealed to me something? And I could not stop it. I cried. I cried. Because God showed me in a revelation about what was happening. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I pray in the name of Jesus that on the day of destiny you will find help. Yeah. That you will not walk into destruction that God has not planned for you. Yeah. And if you are already walking in the place and walking in a, a season because of disobedience, and not finding help of direction and you have been devout like Saul, like Paul of Tarsus I stand in the midst of you I say there shall be no losses I shout it out there shall be no losses I speak recovery 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 shout Jesus you see Paul said there shall be no losses there will be no loss of life among you in verse 22 but only of the sheep they didn't need to lose that sheep it's because you know so many things we lose in the present thank God thank God I did not die thank God God spared my daughter but we wasted money we wasted resources we couldn't finish the building we had started we couldn't do this we did not need to lose those things we don't need to lose them verse 23 Paul said for there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve and he said to me do not be afraid Paul you must be brought before Caesar. It means because you are in their midst, I will spare them. And indeed, God has granted you all. Those who sail with me, God has granted you all. Those who sail with you. Okay, say, the angel said, God has granted you. So they were now saved through Paul. This is the power of a minister that they treated as a, treated as a prisoner. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as I was told. <sighs> Rise. Next week, we'll wrap this up. The greatest gift that people give to Satan to devour them, disobedience. Walking without asking God for direction. Walking into, without asking God for direction. I, I just want to bless God just want to bless God. I want to bless God. I want to bless God. Oh, I just want to bless God. I bless God for the gift of direction. I boast every day. And when God told me it was time to leave the Catholic priesthood, I was ready to make all the mistakes in this world. By now, I will have been buried. Nobody will have known me. Nobody, everybody will hear me, will hear me only in shame. Will know about me in shame. The greatest thing is that God gave me instruction. Oh, Yahweh instructed me. Oh, Yahweh instructed me. A young man who plays drums in this place, Nsisong. You know Nsisong? He had been with me since the, for 10 years. He came under prophetic grace. Started operating in the prophetic. One meeting I attended in the church and my case came up. And I, my heart was broken. I said, oh, this is the last time I will be discussed in the meeting of this man. I'm done. I'm going to walk away. Everybody talked about me. A very senior priest said, I came from another city in order to come and meet you, this boy, to tell you this and that and that. Everything just fell apart, just looked like I was so wrong and I was such a criminal. And my plan was to walk away from that place in anger and give my resignation. But God had told me you will not go in a haste. 
That watch in Isaiah kept coming. You will not go in a haze. That night as I contemplated that the following morning, and see someone came and sat down with me. He said, I don't know. That day I don't know, but I just feel like I'm told to come and tell you that God said I should tell you what he wanted to do for you. It's about being destroyed by a mistake. God is saying what you are about doing right now is going to turn against you what was to work for you. This boy didn't know. He was not in the meeting. I didn't discuss it with any human being on earth. My drummer sat down there. Say that thing that you want to do. God said that thing he will have used to help you will turn against you if you go ahead and do what you plan to do. I sat down and looked at him. I, I asked him, kneel down. I blessed him. I did not say anything. He left. And that's how I forgot about it. When it was time, God told me, now it is time. So that is the secret of me standing here. That you know people say, I can never leave. I can never. So you know, you know, you know. All kinds of, so direction makes God your protection. When you follow God's direction, sir, stay under obedience and pay attention. Lift up your two hands. I'm done. Today is not a day of prayer. I'm sure you have heard what God wanted you to hear. Just lift up your two hands. Just ask God. Tell God I'm sorry. For every time I think I know. For every time I take decisions and I think I know. For every time I despise your word and trust my inclination. The word of God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Say, Lord, show me mercy. In any way, I have opened the door to the devourer because of disobedience. Because of taking a decision without seeking your approval. In any way, I have opened the door for the devourer in misery and pain and shame. Oh Lord, show me mercy. Show me mercy. And Paul spoke that the, the angel of God stood by him and said, but I have also granted you the lives of all of those with you. I stand here as, as God's servant over you. Stretch your hand towards me. I'm standing here with the authority of this call. I'm standing here with the authority I have been given to build you up and not to destroy you. I ask God that the mistakes of your life will no longer stand against you. I said the mistakes of your life will no longer stand against you. I declare that the mistakes of your life will no longer stand against you. I say that the mistakes of your life will no longer stand against you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, let there be recovery. Papa, let there be recovery. Let there be recovery. Let there be financial recovery. Let there be marital recovery. Let there be academic recovery. Oh, Lord, let there be emotional recovery. People whose hearts have been broken and shattered because they entered into dealings that did not, did not have your approval. People who carry emotional scars and wounds and bruises and traumas that come from disobedience and walking like a limelech, walking without asking for direction. Lord, I'm asking, show mercy and bring recovery in the name of Jesus. People who carry spiritual poison because they walked in association with people sent by the enemy to devour them. And they will not allow the word of God to separate them from those companies. Lord, show mercy Amen. and bring recovery. Amen. I don't know who is in this place who carries poison in the system. I don't know who is here that has recurrent sickness that has defied any, sick, any medication. It is recurrent. It goes and it comes. It goes and it comes. I stand with the same authority with which Paul the apostle stood. And he said, the angel of my God stood by me and said, there shall be no loss and that I have also granted you the lives of all those with you. I stand with that same authority. Say, whatever it is, 
that have been designed by Satan to devour your health and waste your resources that goes and comes comes and goes now it goes and will never come back in the name of Jesus <laughs> lift up those two hands ask God to take something away from your life I don't know what that thing is say in the name of Jesus from today Lord take this away from me and I agree with you I agree with you I take by the authority of God I take it from you I take that shame from you I take that waste from you I take that shame from you I take that bed wetting from you I take that shame from you I take that bleeding from you I take that bleeding from you I take that bleeding from you I take whatever it is that a woman whatever it is it is not bleeding of blood but bleeding of whatever that a woman here not blood but bleeding of something I take it from you I take it from you I take it from you financial drainages uh, things that drain you of financial energy and strength I take them from you in the name of Jesus Christ lay your hand on any part of your body I bring about impartation of health come alive in health come alive in health come alive in strength recover I say 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 recover in the name of Jesus Christ.